You ready? Do I have to introduce myself again? Or are you good? <laughs> oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> All right, like I was saying, I am going to give you some quick tips just to keep in mind to make your product not suck, which would be great. So I'm going to start off with something really basic. Um, I'm sure you've seen it everywhere, but the grid, which I always think of Tron when I say the grid, which actually works as a great analogy because everything's on the grid there. It all looks wonderful, nice, and perfect, and that's what we want our designs to look like. So I'm going to show you some good examples, kind of run through it. And there's a bad example, too. So as a designer, I just have all these tons of pretty websites, and so I had to go find something that was a little bit simpler. So this is just a, a blog news uh, place, and it's really important that uh, the grid's used here because there's so much stuff, and it is all varied. All the photos are different colors, just all over the place. So the grid really helps to um, keep the content together. And when you have so much information, it's really important to stick to the grid or it gets really messy really quick. So I just went ahead and drew out the grid on this one. I think this is a 10 column grid. Um, you can use any number you want. Usually sticking to something less is better, just so you don't have so many little things that starts to get confusing. So sticking with, um, I, 12 is a very common one, um, 10, anything really works with this. So you just start to get these relationships, like the title and then the links and then the edge of the um, screen, you kind of all get this line up and this hierarchy and it works really nicely. Um, let's see, the bad. So actually I had a really hard time finding a bad example of, of these templates. You kind of get a grid built in and it's, kind of becoming foolproof, which is great, but I did find an example. Um, I'm not going to say anything about the design, which is great, <laughs> but if I'm just looking clearly at the grid here, just nothing lines up with anything else. This comes over here, this comes in, this comes in, overlaps over here. It's just, there's no grid, there's no hierarchy, there's nothing to it. And that's bad, we don't want to do that. <laughs> So, um, I think I'm um, just another tip to make things work. When things are slightly off, like this, I mean, you just have slight problems with things, that's when they look like a mistake. If you wanted to do that on purpose, if you wanted this to overlap, you better overlap it a lot and make it obvious. Being, I'm doing this on purpose, I didn't accidentally do this. It's this consideration. Yeah, well. Maybe they purposely wanted just a little bit to hang over. I don't know. Um, yeah, so use a grid. There are a few exceptions when it's okay not to, if you really want to call something out, but use it really sparingly. Like maybe like a big headline or a big picture. That's kind of where you can break away from it. But for the for in general, stick to the grid. Hierarchy. Um, I just really like Parks and Recreation. I wanted to put it up there because I like the Swanson Pyramid of Greatness, but it kind of works. So every time you're going to build a page, you really want to think, what is the most important thing on this page? Is it telling me about an event? Am I trying to get something to sell? So you need to really determine that order of importance. So say you're selling a Cheese of the Month membership. You probably have Join Us. You have what are the cheeses this month and the history? If you go to your page and your history is where your eye goes first, that's a problem because obviously you want to sell your cheese. So, yes. So I'm going to go through a quick few tips. They're pretty obvious, but we're stating again. Color. Put things in color, they pop off the page. Smart, productive. That's who these people are, because their colors tell me that. It doesn't necessarily have to be bright and colorful. If you have a really dark page, maybe something like a white or something really desaturated might pop off. Um, as long as it just stands out from the page and you get that contrast from the other less important words, color is good. Size. You're going to read bigger things quicker. So you're going to read 
in addition to its top, but we have good measure. It's really big. We have the secondary description is pretty big, as well as the arrow. And then we have the little scroll, if you didn't understand the arrow, to go down. So again, pretty obvious. Won't go too much into it. Um, placement of items on page, I think, a little bit more into. So this is um, a designer's website. And they're trying to sell their services. So what do you want the most important thing to be is your design and how pretty you did things. And that's where your eye goes first, is to this big picture. Cool, they know what they're doing. I wonder what the name of the project is. Secondly, you go up to the title. And then kind of third, you jump to the visit to the site so you can actually go see it. And I think that's the importance. Like, here's my, here's my work. Here's the name of it. Here you can go see it. And if you want to read about it, that's kind of the last thing you can do. But um, pretty good idea of that. Um, like I said, there's plenty and plenty of things that you can do to establish hierarchy, but those are three big ones. I think if you use them well, that's all you really need. Type. I love type. Um, people at Gaslight know that I've already given a talk about type. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this short. <laughs> Ampersands, I could just talk about those for hours. Family time. So this is a family of typefaces. Um, in general, when you're trying to choose a typeface, uh, you want to stick to one that's going to have a few different weights to it. Um, typically, if you can get a bold, a normal, and an italic, you're good to go because you're able to get this variety. So you can see this is all one typeface, all the same size, all the same color, but you still get the distinctive, this is really important, it's kind of important, there's a little bit important too. So you kind of get these different levels, all within the same typeface, and they all tie together, which is the important part. So use one typeface. Don't do this, it's very confusing. I feel like a lot of times we're really seduced by these like cool hit fonts, I'm gonna put them everywhere, and it just starts to look like a hot mess. Just don't do it. Like I was saying, you get a lot of variety. You can get a lot of variety with the three, with one typeface with different weights. You can usually work with that. If you do want to add in a second typeface, which is cool, um, I'd suggest making um, one maybe your headlines and one your body type. And um, typically this is done with a um, the sans serif. Usually on the web is um, the body type, maybe more like this. That would make more sense. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, um, this is a serif font and this is a sans serif. These are what makes it a um, serif, these little tails on them. So those are typically um, headlines. Not always. Again, there's always exceptions to all these rules, but um, for the most part, I would stick to having serifs as headlines and sans serifs as body if we are going to pick two. Um, consistent sizing. Um, I guess this is something I've been learning as I've been going along. You really want to st stick to three or four different consistent sizes throughout a website. It gets confusing if you jump from one page to the other and you have your body type is 20 pixels on one page and 23 pixels on another page. It's so, we're going back to, they're so similar, why not just make them the same because it looks like a mistake. We don't want things to look like a mistake. Um, so I would say kind of, you know, go through, pick, you know, what do I think my biggest is going to be medium body. I've been kind of working, I guess, personally with them probably about like maybe three headline sizes and then like a paragraph body size and maybe like a lead paragraph and just setting those and leaving them and don't mess with them unless you have, again, a special reason that you're calling something out. It's very important. It could be special. Um, color. Um, color is probably my, well, I don't know, type and color. That's why I'm a designer, because I like all these things. Um, I've kind of touched on color a little bit earlier in the presentation, but I'll go a little bit more in depth here. Good colors. I have no clue how these are going to show up on the screen, so we'll see how it goes. That's not bad. All right, so when I'm, first off, picking a color palette, bag, borrow, steal. Don't just think you need to go and like, okay, I need to pick the perfect palette. Go out and look at things. Take inspiration from around you. Um, there's plenty of websites out there. I think of Cooler I use. 
that have great color palettes to jump off of. So I go and usually kind of search for that feeling I'm getting. I kind of have like a cool, sophisticated look, like myself, right here. Um, I, I tend to take those and then kind of tweak them and work them until it gets to what I want. And what I'm looking for in a color palette, I usually try to have like a dark saturated color, kind of some mid-range tones, and then like a light um, color to play with. And something I look for is um, this contrast between the colors that they can play next to each other and they're very clearly two different colors. They don't blend together. And then I also like to use um, values of the same color. So I think this is that color. And then we just have this at 25% opacity and you get this color, which is nice. You get this tie in and it kind of creates, again, a family and a cohesion, which I think is important for design. And then last, I kind of add this pop of red and I call it my spice color. Um, it just adds a little bit, a little zing, a little bit different from this very like calm green and blue and soothing. Then you have this like dark red and it really pops and brings things to life. So that's what I think makes up a good color palette. Um, bad colors, maybe like okay colors. So I kept the uh, left two colors and kind of added in this blues. And this is fine. I mean, it's kind of boring. It's just like internet blue. It's whatever. It's not bad. Um, so one of my problems is when I take this teal color and put it on the blue, if you can tell, it kind of starts to blend together. And you just lose that contrast. And, I, and it works. There's some reasons you do need to use that. But usually, you don't want that. You want something that's more high contrast. So I kind of feel like I'm losing. I can't use these two colors together ever because they're kind of blend together, and you can't see what you're showing. Um, and then also with this lighter color, it's pretty tough to tell on this, I'm sorry. Um, if these are so close, why not just make them a, a different saturation? It's just silly to have a whole new set when you could have one consistent color. It's just silly to have another color in there. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. I would just say kind of play with it, um, be varied, but not too much. It's, a, it's definitely a learned skill, like I said, Definitely look, check out Cooler. It's a great resource for that kind of thing. All right. Um, go with the flow. Again, this is probably going to be obvious, but don't try to change what people know. Green means go. Red means stop. Don't try to flip-flop them because you're being cool. People don't understand that. And it's, it's really amazing when they think when you know hey, green always means I should go. Why is this telling me I have to do something else? Everything's green. You don't read the message. You just see green. That means, OK, everything's right. And it's just really interesting how deep that runs. And the same thing is um, if you're using two, same, two of those colors, this more saturated color um, on the right is really going to grab your attention. And that's your action button. And then I tend to make my uh, secondary calls, like a back or a uh, secondary action, a little bit more sat desaturated and kind of blends back into the page. So um, in general, I'd say, you know, call to action. You want that to be bright, punchy, pop out on the page, and going back to that hierarchy. Final thoughts, finally. You're not a special snowflake. Don't go out and just, I want to be the most creative person in the world and just go and make your website just not make any sense. That's silly, but you are a special snowflake. If you follow some of these rules, if you follow the rules, you get a very consistent looking website. You want to go ahead and add something a little bit crazy, a little bit zany, some crazy navigation or a big photo or some big type, go for it. Moderation, animation, moderation is the key. Just add something that makes it stand out a little bit, but doesn't make it inconsistent. Thanks. So when you're choosing colors, mm -hmm. for the for the good example that you showed, was I, I'm sorry for my complete ignorance, but was there a relationship there on the color wheel where those things complementary each other or across from each other? Um, I, I I guess you could say greens and reds do go together. Um, I was no, I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. You know, it's kind of become second nature for me to pick these colors out. So I'm probably not going to give you a good explanation of this. But these guys kind of work together. I feel like they're they're very they're pretty cool in tone and um, 
kind of all flow together, blue to green, right next to each other, and the color wheel kind of goes together. And then we do bring in this red, which is on the opposite side. It kind of pops it in, and that's why it is so different. But it does still kind of desaturate, so it doesn't completely pop. Like, it isn't like the red of this pillow. That wouldn't work so well in there. So it still kind of all works together, this like cool palette. But we do get this pop because it is on the other side of the color wheel. Definitely putting the colors on top of each other is something that I can see. Mm. Yeah. Whether they lose themselves or whether they stand up. True. Hmm. Some thoughts. So I was wondering, hoping you might talk a little more about the information hierarchy and how do you go about deciding on how you want to represent that or deciding on what your hierarchy is and then deciding what's the way that you want to emphasize the hierarchy because that's that's in my mind that's one of the more subtle things that I'm trying to trying to get my head around so do you mean how I decide what's important and what should be emphasized on the page or yeah, so I guess when you're thinking about the purpose of the page, how do you go about categorizing this stuff from most important to least important? Mm, I, you, you don't want to overwhelm people with design. I feel like you, we are in this fast-paced world. You only want one message. You don't want a million overcrowding things. So I guess I try to stick to one message per hierarchy. I don't, so I have one big thing then maybe, you know, as, I don't know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, I, I'm just trying to not overwhelm. I want everything to be compartmentalized so you can say this group of things relate, this group of things relate, and this group of things relate, and I see this first, second, and third. Is there like a test you can do? I mean, do you ever just like show a random person a web page and say what is the first thing you look at? There is. I've, I've seen a few techniques, I guess, just again, because I've been doing it for a little bit, what I can just tell. People do this thing called a blur test. And if you take the page and what you're working on and blur it, you kind of, you can't read the edges, but you can see what pops off the page without actually reading it. So something's big and dark on a really light page that pops out. And I know I've seen some examples out there of that. Um, so yeah, I'd say maybe squint at the screen and kind of see what you, I, I mean, as silly as that sound, and, and it's squint, and if you're like, hmm, this picture is popping off for me right now, but I really want this button to be the most important things, well, you probably should rethink how that's ordered, maybe move the button on top of the photo or above the photo, or move it around or change the size. That's where I start to bring in those hierarchy cues or change the color and try to pull those into balance. Found yourself in many situations where you know it's kind of a back and forth with a client on they want to tell all the stories on one page and everything is important. Yes. And, <laughs> and, uh, and these buttons like should be yellower. Yes. Yeah. I, I need more yes. pop. You know. Uh, make my logo bigger. Yes. Make my logo bigger. Always. Make the logo bigger. <laughs> Always. Um. Yeah, it, it tends to, I don't know, I tend to pull back a little bit and think, you really need to think, what, what am I going on this page for? What is the main point? I know you'd be like, I want to do this, this, and this. Well, there has to be something you want to go to first. And when you design it, show it to them, that's not the first thing. I think once you start to show the design and show, hey, this would look really bad with everything on there, they start to see it. It's easy to say everything's important, but when you actually visually show it to them, they start to understand more. I feel like pictures help in this case. Um, but I think it's just more, I mean, hopefully have that trust between them. But I know you do get the clients where they really just don't know, and that's when you have to throw it out in the field, I feel like, and test it. And if you find people aren't what you think is your primary function is actually, actually a secondary function, you have to do iterations and no design. I mean, I can think, oh, this is the most important part when it actually isn't. And I just have to accept that. And I'm not going to get right the first time, every time, and they aren't either. That's what design iterations are for. It's never, design's not a static thing. There's not the right answer. Cool. 
Wow, similarities.